This topic continues our investigation about the many causes of fatigue. This week's topics include thyroid problems that occur when we have too much or too little thyroid hormone, and problems of the adrenal gland, or the gland sometimes called the suprarenal gland because it sits on top of the kidneys. Lastly, we'll end with a review of some liver diseases. Although these, these are certainly not all of the causes of fatigue, it should get us well on our way. Thyroid hormones affect the metabolic function of many cells within the body and therefore not only influence the cell function, but indirectly have consequences related to overall energetics and body temperature. We'll see some of these problems and conditions that both increase and decrease thyroid function. Starting with hypothyroidism or lowered thyroid function, you will immediately see that affects women much more commonly than men. A large part of that is because Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, is the main cause of hypothyroidism in the United States and it's an autoimmune disease. As with most autoimmune diseases, they tend to attack women more often than men. Another cause of hypothyroidism is not eating enough iodine, but it isn't nearly as common in the U.S. as other countries because our FDA mandated the addition of iodine and salt many years ago. And let's face it, not getting enough salt isn't really a big issue in our country. A few minor causes of hypothyroidism are through surgery where the thyroid gland is cut for one reason or another or through radiation as in the treatment for cancer. Medications can also be responsible such as PTU which is used for the treatment of hyperthyroidism. Potassium iodine is another example and for the same reason. Um, lithium is a medication given for a variety of reasons but the treatment of bipolar disorder is one of its main uses. <clears throat> So, let's get oriented here. The thyroid gland is located in the front of the neck, and at least in males, we can fill the front of it by the Adam's apple. It secretes both T3 and T4 hormones that are very important in maintaining an active metabolism or speeding things up, like the heart rate or heat generation. In order for T3 and T4 to be released from the thyroid gland, there must be a signal from TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, and that is released from the pituitary gland. However, in order for TSH to be released from the pituitary gland, TRH, or thyroid releasing hormone, has to, <coughs> <coughs> has to stimulate it, and that comes from the hypothalamus. As you see from the drawing here, there is also a negative feedback mechanism in place to maintain proper amounts of the active T3 and T4 in the blood. This slide shows a few more functions of T3 and T4. You can go ahead and try to pronounce them if you want. You ready? Triiodothyronine is T3 and thyroxin is T4. That wasn't so hard, was it? Notice some of the functions of T3 and T4. Can you guess some of the conditions that might be caused with low levels? Calcitonin is another hormone that is produced in the thyroid gland. Do you remember what it does? Calcitonin tones calcium down in the blood. This is a little table meant to be used as a quiz to distinguish between the causes of hypothyroidism. <coughs> the definitions are primary. The problem is that the actual gland that produces and releases the active hormone. In this case, the thyroid gland is the primary organ. Secondary, the problem is the gland or structure that is one level removed from the primary gland. The secondary structure will produce a precursor hormone that is needed in order to stimulate the primary organ or gland to produce the active hormone that goes into the bloodstream. Tertiary, the problem lies with the structure that is two levels removed from the primary gland. In this case, the hypothalamus needs to stimulate the pituitary, which needs to stimulate the thyroid gland. Without the TRH from the hypothalamus, TSH will not be stimulated, and without TSH, T3 and T4 will not be released. Please view the slide in full screen mode and predict what the hormone levels will be at each gland or structure. Actually, that doesn't 
that applies to this. <coughs> so let's see if you can predict these. Secondary, what is broken? Primary, what is broken? And tertiary, what is broken? Okay. Hypothyroidism is deficient production of thyroid hormone by the thyroid gland. The condition may be primary, secondary, or tertiary, and symptoms depend on the degree of thyroid hormone deficiency. Common manifestations include decreased energy metabolism, decreased heat production, and myxedema. Depending on when the patient suffers from hypothyroidism during their lifetime, primary symptoms may be different. For example, during childhood, when growth and development takes place at a much faster rate, a deficiency in thyroid hormone will lead to skeletal defects and CNS problems, including decreased cognition or the ability to think. As an adult suffering from hypothyroidism, the patient will have a severely decreased metabolism and energy level. Everything is slowed down. DTR, by the way, means deep tendon reflexes. Myxedema is a type of edema found in patients with chronic hypothyroidism where the connective fibers in the dermis and other tissues get separated by large protein deposits that attract water. This manifests as a non-pitting edema, especially around the eyes, hands, feet, and the shoulders. It also makes thick mucous membranes in the tongue and pharynx and larynx, leading to thick, slurred speech and hoarseness. If the hypothyroidism gets severe enough, it, be, it can become a medical emergency, uh, known as a myxedema coma. The patient will have hypothermia without shivering, their breathing, blood pressure, and sugar levels will drop significantly, and lactic acid will build up in the blood. <coughs> this is a pretty good slide that shows the common clinical manifestations of hypothyroidism, regardless of the cause of hypothyroidism. Hashimoto's, or autoimmune thyroiditis, is associated with infiltration of circulating thyroid antibodies and gradual loss of thyroid function. As mentioned earlier, it's the most common cause of hypothyroidism in the U.S., and females are more often affected than males. A goiter will likely form either on one or both sides of the thyroid tissue, and the patient will show signs and symptoms listed earlier. <coughs> Testing? include serum levels of T3 and T4, of course, as well as TSH levels. Do you remember what structure this is measuring? And antibodies against the thyroid gland. Keep in mind that these antibodies against the thyroid gland cause a decreased thyroid function. Later, we'll see where the same scenario produces an increased function in another disease. This picture just shows a drawing of a goiter or inflamed thyroid gland. Although, this uh, one down here, I don't think that's a goiter. That's some kind of massive nasty tumors in this lady's neck. Subacute um, thyroiditis also leads to hypothyroidism as a result of a self-limiting non-bacterial inflammation of the thyroid gland. Inflama or inflammatory processes damage follicular cells, causing leakage of T3 and T4. The strange manifestation of this condition is that a patient will present with symptoms of a viral infection and neck pain, then will have a lot of energy for a short period of time before things, quote, settle back to normal but it's actually hypothyroid for that short period of time after the increased energy state. Lab tests will not show any antibodies against the thyroid, so that's a key. <coughs> 